All right, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about optimization. So uh, optimization, and we're going to start out with an example you'll see here in just a second, is basically um, where you are given uh, a constraint or sets of constraints um, for a certain scenario, and we'll see in this problem what that is, and based on those constraints, supposed to find um, a, a maximum or minimum of, of something based on those constraints. So, you know, here's an example. In this case, it says to find two positive numbers such that their product is 81 and their sum is a minimum. So the constraints come from the beginning of this uh, sentence here, saying that there's, you know, we have to have two positive numbers. That's, you know, part of the constraint is they have to be positive numbers, such that their product is 81. So we have two numbers. How about we call them x and y? Our numbers, we'll call them x and y. Okay, so x times y has to equal 81. So that's what I refer to as the constraint equation. Okay, x times y is equal to 81. Okay, it's got to happen. And then it says, and their sum is a minimum. So this case, it's optimization, it could be looking to find the minimum or maximum. In this case, we're looking to find the minimum of the sum. Okay, so in this case, you know, the sum of these two numbers would be s is equal to x plus y. Okay, so you're always going to have two equations. You have a constraint equation and your optimization equation, which is the equation that you're either looking to find the minimum or the maximum of. Okay, now in this case here, I'm, I shouldn't say in this case, um, in, in any case, you know, let's think here. So our goal eventually is to find basically the x and y values that make the sum a minimum. Okay, so when I hear the word minimum, okay, and I'm talking about calculus or the word maximum for that matter, just you know, in case you're asking for maximum, I'm usually thinking where the derivative is zero. You know, whether we're talking about relative minimum, whether we're talking about absolute minimum, in any of those cases, the first step for all the problems is to find the derivative and see where it equals zero. Okay, because minimums, you know, uh, generally, you know, can at least occur there. I shouldn't say always occur there because with other things, they can occur other places, but they could occur there, okay? So, what I'd like to do, here's S. I want to find where S is a minimum. I should find the derivative S prime and see where it equals zero, okay? But I have two variables going on here, all right? Um, I'd like to eliminate one of those variables first. So that's where the constraint equation comes in, ha uh, comes in handy. Now, in this case, x eliminating x or y is equally as easy. So let's say I divided both sides by x and got 81 over x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 81 over x, and I'm going to plug it in where I see y over here, since y is equal to 81 over x. So I get s is equal to x plus 81 over x. Okay? And so now I'm going to go ahead, and I want to take the derivative of this. Before I do so, I'm going to rewrite s one more time, x plus 81 times x to the negative 1. It's the same thing, but it's just you know, bringing this x up and writing it with a negative exponent. Okay, um, and let's see here, now I'm ready to take the derivative, so s prime is going to equal, okay, the derivative is going to be 1, and then bring the negative one down, minus 81x to the negative 2, alright? So I'd like to see where this is equal to 0, so I'm going to rewrite it as 1 minus 81 over x squared, and see where that's equal to 0. Now I notice, you know, right from the get-go, that... The, s prime is undefined at x equals 0, so I could think, okay, well, um, that might be something that initially people might see, well, that could be where a minimum happens, which is true. Minimum is going to happen where the derivative is equal to 0, but x equals 0 makes no sense here. There's no way to multiply two numbers together, one of them being 0, and get 81. So 0 is not going to work, okay? So let me see where this actually equals 0. So let's see, I'll move 81 over x squared to the other side. So 1 equals 81 over x squared. I will then go ahead and multiply by x squared. So I have x squared is equal to 81. And then I'll take the square root of both sides, and I will get from that x equals plus or minus 9. But if I look back up to the original problem up here, it says find two positive numbers. So I'm not going to use the negative. It's only going to be the positive. So I found that x is equal to 9. Now, I wanted to find two positive numbers, you know, one being x, one being y. So I'm going to go back over to here, and I'm going to plug 9 in for x to see what y is equal to, okay, because I know that x is equal to 9. So I get y equals 81 over 9, which is equal to 9. So my two positive numbers, my answer would be 9 and 9, okay? Those are the two numbers that multiply together to be 81, and when you add them together, 
come up with the smallest sum, you know, versus let's say uh, 1 times 81, for instance. Those numbers multiply to be 81, but clearly when you add them together, their sum is, um, you know, larger than 9 plus 9.